Hello everyone and welcome. We're here to learn about Emuna and the Perasha. This week we have a very interesting reunion. After a separation of 22 years, the Torah tells us about the reunion of a father and a son of Yaakov Avinu, our forefather Jacob, re- reunites with his son Yosef, Joseph. The Torah teaches us that Yosef was crying excessively, he was crying a lot. But the Torah doesn't seem to tell us about the reaction of his father, of Yaakov. We know that his father Yaakov wasn't comforted for 22 years. Of course, Rashi tells us that he couldn't be comforted because he knew that he was alive, there was no closure. So where is Jacob's reaction? Where is Yaakov Avinu's reaction? Rashi says something very interesting. He says, Yaakov was busy saying Shema. He was saying, Shema Yisrael, hear O Israel, listen. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem is our God, no matter if it's mercy, no matter if it's judgment, Hashem Echad, there's no one but Hashem, no one could hurt you, no one could do good, if not for Hashem decreeing. What is this encounter teaching us? It's a little bit interesting. So let's go back a step. Why did the Jews have to go down to Egypt? Why did Hashem make it that there should be a famine, there should be no food around, that Yaakov and his whole family have to go down to Egypt, which eventually led to the exile that we suffered in Egypt, which eventually led to the freedom from the exile. Why do we have to go through it? Yaakov Avinu, he built up a family of 12 beautiful children, each one whole and wholesome and good and holy. It says that he was complete, Yaakov. If he was complete, why does he have to go down into exile? What did he do wrong? So we have to know that the Jews had to go through a process. They had to get tested. They had to get tested with a test, a general test of all the nations of the world. And this general test is a test in morality, which is, so to speak, the peel before the fruit. You want to get to the beautiful fruit, whatever you have. You want to get to the orange, you have to peel away at the layer of the the husk. You want to get to the nut, you have to get away, you have to crack the shell. So the Jews needed to go through a test in order for them to get the Torah at Mount Sinai. This goes true for each, one of, each and every one of us. person goes and he feels like he's going through a test. person shouldn't give up. He should have this in mind and say, Hey, Hashem is testing me. If I go through this test and I ask Hashem for help to get me through this test, I know that I will get something out of this. It's not for nothing. I'm going to get a new, clear understanding of, of the Torah. I'm going to be connected to the Torah. Torah sometimes feels so far, I don't have it in my schedule. I don't connect to it. Or you're already connected to it, but you want to get a deeper connection and understand it more, and it should, should mean something to you. There will be tests first. How do we combat them? How do we manage to fight the temptations you have to have your affirmations in check. Yaakov knew this and he declared, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. He was strengthening his emunah. He was strengthening in the fact that yes, there is going to be an exile. But if I know that Hashem is king and not my desires, those things are not going to lead me. I'm not going to crown my desires king. I'm going to crown Hashem king. Even if I fall, I'm going to get up because this is the situation I am. I'm not going to blame myself. I'm going to continue going and start again and start again because Hashem Echad, everything is from Hashem. But Yosef was in Egypt and he's been through a huge test, even deeper than the test that we see. He was alone. His brothers didn't like him. They sold him as a slave. He could have did whatever he wanted and no one would know a thing. But he held strong. And he was tested and he knew 
that the test in Egypt, the test in exile, the test that we are going through right now towards the end of exile are not easy. And they need tears. It's not alone to say Shema. You need to have Shema with tears. It's a very long discourse that Rabbi Nachman teaches about this idea of tears with Shema and that tears are what fix the excess matter. If a person wants to look it up, you can look in, in uh, part one of Likutei Maran, Torah 36. But a person has to know that this applies to us also. A person will say, hey, Shema with tears? What does that have to do with me? I barely am able to say Shema with concentration, which is step one. Yes, we should try to say Shema with concentration and to be able to crown Hashem king and say that Hashem is the king of the world and not my desires and not anything else. So our rabbis teach us that yes, when you have a moment of inspiration, whether you're by a gravesite of a sadiq or you're feeling brokenhearted, not depressed, and you want to be, you long to be close to Hashem. And even if this might not happen so often, but just to know that if a person gets to a moment that he's crying, he should say Shema, and this will help you get through anything and any challenge that you'll ever have. Shema has 12 words, including the first verse, and Baruch Shem Kevod Machoto Le'olam Ba'ed, which means that Hashem is blessed forever, no matter what happens, whether good or bad. We always have to thank Hashem. And it has 49 letters. There are 12 tribes, and the names of the tribes have 49 letters. Any person, no matter what time of year, 12 months, no matter what time of day, 12 hours in a day, no matter what time of the night, no matter if it's so dark in your life, you could always attach yourself to emunah. You could always restart and you could declare, Hashem, you are God. I had enough of serving my desires. I had enough of serving my own ego. I just want to be close to you. And a person will hopefully will be able to fix all his sins and merit to Kedushah. And this will help us to get out of our exile and help us cope with the exile and to know that it will bring us to something bigger. So it sounds a little bit far-fetched, like we said, to cry and say Shema. But if you do have a moment, you can channel it. It actually fits a little bit with this idea that there's another idea. Yaakov was saying Shema. Why was he saying Shema? It was a moment of love. He was so happy to be reunited with his son. He said Shema. What do we say in Shema, right after Shema? Ve'ahavta et Hashem elokecha. You should love Hashem. He was feeling so much love and had energy of love inside of him. He wanted to channel it to Hashem. So to us, when we have these feelings that we're emotional and we start to cry, Hashem should help us to cry for good things, to cry in our service of Hashem, of wanting and yearning to be close to Hashem, channel it. Say the words of Shema. I never tried it myself, but... If I learned this, I will try. Hashem should help us to be focused and realize that, yes, there are challenges, but the challenges are for a purpose and they're not here to hurt us and they're not here to put us down. And yes, we're going through this exile, but it's for a purpose to bring us a new Torah, to bring us a new clean soul, to bring us to new levels that Hashem will help us hopefully with the rebuilding of the Bet HaMikdash. Amen. Looking forward to see everyone again. Shabbat Shalom.